My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel, and I still do today. But you know what I've learned? There's so much more that brings us together than divides us. Every corner of the world is unique, from big cities to small towns and everywhere in between. Through history, culture, culinary, and hands-on trial and error, I'll introduce you to the people, the places, and the secrets that remind us just how exciting it is to share with one another, to understand one another, and to realize just how connected we really are. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is an extra special edition of Beyond Your Backyard. Thank you for watching and welcome back. Well, you may not know this, but the Swedish word for food is mat or livsmedel. As a matter of fact, you guessed it, that's what today's episode is all about. We're gonna take you to Stockholm and Gothenburg to learn more about Swedish meatballs, fresh fish, farm to table ingredients, and delicious cinnamon pastries. Well, of course, we're also going to Ikea too, and Swedish fish. Let's get started in Gothenburg. I have a question for you. Does Sweden have a culinary identity on the world stage? Does it fit into some category or does it sort of fit into a Scandinavian category and then we, we parcel things out of it? Just out of curiosity. I think personally mm -hmm. that the Nordic is a kitchen of itself, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't go to anything else in Europe mm -hmm. or the rest of the world. But that being said, what do you mean by Nordic Kitchen? What we can grow up here, what we can farm up here, and mm -hmm. what we can catch up here. That is the base of the gastronomy, I would say. Got it. But the Nordic persons, they are curious. And we are a traveling person, so we, we go on the whole planet mm -hmm. and, and get inspiration. Looking for the yeah, inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, we welcome all, the world too. Scandinavia and Sweden. So we have, especially in Sweden, we have all cultures. And you do feel that sense of, huh, you're not from here, we're happy you are from here, let us show you around a little bit, yeah. and show you what we are proud of. Yeah, and also historically also, uh, it's, it's, it's been going on for all, all times in Sweden. And that is also something that I'm very proud of. Yeah. And uh, it makes me very happy, because mm -hmm. a mixture of all is, is the best thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Well. What are we going to start with today? So, so we have two, two species of oyster in, in Sweden, and the, the traditional one is, is the idulis. It's Latin and means edible, and it's considered to be the best oyster in the world. They are handpicked by a, a superhero named Lotta. Really? Yeah. She dresses in, in a scuba diving suit. No. And it walks, she walks on the ocean floor, picking them one by one. No. Yeah, and not just anyone. She's very picky which, uh, which individual she picks. Because all of her oysters are 100% almost perfect, yeah? Oh my gosh, how will you eat this? I think that you should have, uh, this is uh, like the Rolls Royce of oysters, you should have it. And then you should chew it a few, three times, because it is totally beautiful to eat, yeah? All right, I can do this. You can do this, oh you are. I take a few pieces of onion on my one. I love onion, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's just onion and vinegar. Cool. Yeah. Chef, those, that is so light. Yeah. It's so flavorful. And so creamy. And just, yeah, it just, yeah. people say, oh, does it really melt in your mouth? It really yeah. does. There is nothing, no such thing as, as perfection in the universe. Mm, but uh, that's pretty close. If anything is ever perfect, it will be bloody boring, yeah? Uh, yeah, But agreed. these ones are quite close to it, yeah? Oh, man. We go with the next course, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Then, then this happened while we were visiting. I am not bragging, but... The, the Nordic lobster is really something else, yeah? Why? Because it's another species that, the, for example, the American one or the ones from the warm water. So this is the blue lobster. I don't know the Latin name for it, That's but right. it is sweeter, it's more tender. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better in any way, yeah? So the Nordic lobster, I'm sorry to say it, but it is very superior. Yeah, yeah, it is superior. Mm -hmm. So it is with uh, small pieces of bacon, but uh, the oh, sauce okay. is most important. It's made with uh, an aged hard cheese from mm. Sweden called Svedian, so you get much saltiness and umami from that one. Uh, That's what's shaved on the yeah, top here? Yeah, it's actually won the world championship of cheese. Of cheese. The sauce is made with the same cheese. Mm -hmm. And in the head you have got a very, very nice tasting mm -hmm. uh, lobster butter. Mm -hmm. So you make it with the cheese and the lobster and butter. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and a tiny small piece of garlic, yeah? Mm -hmm. That has to be the best lobster I've ever had, ever. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. You can taste the individual 
flavor palettes. Yeah. It's unbelievable. My favorite flavor is dill. Many people make fun about that. Um, yeah. If you want uh, any food and make it taste Swedish, just add some just dill. Just add some dill. Yeah, for oh, me, Swedish. Sweden tastes of dill. I am totally very picky. <laughs> so I want to know which boat that brought here which fisher. Because no. the guys on the boat, they know where to fish for fish, the fishes, mm -hmm. and when during the year to do it. To go, yeah. yeah. What is this? Now this looks amazing. Yeah, this is herring. This is herring? Yeah, but it's not any herring, it's called strumming. If you translate it to English, it may, might be called anchovy, but it's another species. It's a different... It's the same species as herring. Wow. But they live on the east coast of Sweden. Okay. And then they are small, yeah, and creamy and fat. There is a small place uh, in the southeast of Sweden, and when they swim past it, then we call it herring instead. And it's marinated with something very strange, fermented caviar. Really? Yeah, and <coughs> fermented crazy. fish. And you, then you crumb it and you fry it. And then <coughs> we have a sauce of the same fermented caviar. And then you have the lingonberries too. And onion rings. Yeah, this might be my favorite dish. This is incredible. Yeah. The, the creaminess here, yeah. the texture is perfect. The outside is crispy, <coughs> the inside is just melt in your mouth. And you're right, those potatoes. I think there's some butter in those potatoes. Uh, I would say the opposite. I think there is some potato in the butter. <laughs> I think you may be right. <laughs> you said me say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy a, a ticket no. and fly all the way from America to here and to have said, this. Yeah. But I would say if they did, yeah. they would they would write you a letter and say, I'm so glad I did. Yeah. I would come here specifically for this meal. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. that, that is what I do. I try to spread joy with my cooking, yeah? And it makes me very happy to, to give this joy to, to many persons. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with every single thing we serve at this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Because it's like my baby is all of them. Yeah. I bloody love eating. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're the best. It's good to meet you, man. I loved everything about my dinner here. Chef Gustav was amazing. The fish, the desserts, well, everything. And by the way, if you've ever wondered if the delicious candy Swedish fish is actually from Sweden, well, they are. These candies were originally developed by Swedish candy maker Malico in the late 1950s for United States consumers. Back in Stockholm, I opted for a meal prepared using centuries-old Nordic techniques, which is cooking over a wood fire oven and fire pit. So I paid a visit to Chef Nicholas Ekstedt's Michelin-starred restaurant, Ekstedt. Someone watching back in, in the US might be curious and think, well, gosh, I don't really know what the Swedish population eats. What's nice about this particular city is, of course, it's a cosmopolitan city. We have Indian food, we have Mexican food, We're from all yes, over the world. Yeah. In general, in what general, do you eat? I like the meatballs, yeah. potatoes, yeah. really nice fish. One thing that I appreciate to Sweden is like they have different kind of food for different type of the year. Now it's the end of the season, but always you eat crayfish. Mm -hmm. We are coming to the mushroom season. Oh. Everyone, oh, almost everyone in the whole country normally go to the forest and try to find some mushrooms. Really? Yeah. Like everyone, even here in Stockholm, like uh, everyone go to different national parks or a small uh, forest to pick, like uh, summer chanterelles or uh, black trumpets. You've selected a perfect spot. It's as if we've got a front row seat to what's about to happen here, right? Yes, exactly. The idea is like we can be a little bit closer when we cook in the food and we can see the fire in different spots. Mm -hmm. The residents really care about what they're putting in their bodies. Absolutely. I think in general, the population, everyone is thinking really much what you are eating. It's really important also here to exercise. This is quite popular now to try to eat the uh, much vegetables. Yeah, but well, what are we gonna have today? I'm excited about this. Yes, we're gonna cook with this technique that is called flambadou. That is a really old technique. We just uh, cook food with birch and a little bit of charcoal. Okay. But we don't use electricity to cook food. The idea for Niklas is like, we cook like the really long time ago times, and we want to do this uh, so near uh, to the forest and uh, um, Nordic. 
the important for us is like we try to cook everything directly before you get the food on fire so you feel the smell of the um, when you are in the forest mm -hmm. and well this works out because my appetite is on fire <laughs> i mean i haven't eaten in uh, like an hour so this is gonna work out for me so Perfect. i say we get started yeah. So the idea is like to make crisp the area on the top with this uh, dry aged uh, beef fat that we have. That's Fresh. amazing. So this beef fat is uh, dry aged for a month. And here we have an, uh, a smoked apple with some verblanc sauce. Oh my gosh, look at this. How do we eat it? So the idea is you pick from there and then you go ahead. Well, cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh my, I'm not sure how to describe that. That was amazing. You like it, right? It's, yeah, do we have like 17 or 18 more of these to go? I mean, I don't know. I wish, oh my gosh, I wish there was a word in English that would describe the smokiness of that. The, yeah, fire. the the fat yeah. give you this uh, balance with the oyster, right? It absolutely does, but there is, oh my gosh. Mm, I might cry. I've never cried over an oyster. Today might be the day. Oh, uh -huh. What is it called? What, how, what, on the we menu? call the um, oyster flambadou. That was lovely. What's next? So here we have these uh, Swedish chanterelles. Oh, we no. We have these scallops that that we uh, ember bake directly on the branches. Mm -hmm. We have the sauce made out of the, the shells and the inside of the scallop, and we make it with the juniper butter with seasoned herb. And then uh, on the bottom, you're gonna have uh, this uh, Swedish uh, seaweed that is also from the West Coast. Mm -hmm. This is called uh, rojina. Mm -hmm. And also we have um, this onion flowers on top. That is so light and perfect. This is incredible, incredible. And th did you say there's no stove back there? No, we, we cook there. That's it? Yeah. It's open, it's all open, all open flame. Yeah. So this Good. bowl is uh, around 250 degrees. Wow. So here we're gonna make this garnish for the lamb course. So we have this thyme fermented butter and we're gonna make some uh, Jerusalem artichokes, some uh, salted baked uh, yellow beetroot, Mm -hmm. and uh, some um, flame uh, corn. Mm -hmm. And then here we have this uh, ember baked onions. Mm -hmm. So we have um, this uh, brisket that uh, we uh, sm warm smoke. So the idea is we serve ourselves the garnish. Got it. On the sides. On the plate we have this uh, pickled kohlrabi. Underneath we have the ember baked uh, eggplant. We have this brisket that we uh, warm smoke. Mm -hmm. for uh, three hours. Oh my gosh. We have the high flame lamb, mm -hmm. and we have these black trumpets. On the vegetables also, we, it's like three different techniques, like we fry pan, the Jerusalem artichokes. It's an interesting combination. You think fire, meaning you're gonna cook everything quickly. Right, that's the, the, the logical, the, like, oh, of course, you're gonna throw it on, because we're used to having a grill, and we put the yeah. thing on, and we take it off. But you're talking about hours and hours of reductions yeah. and, and a perfect, I suppose that's why you end up with a Michelin star. You know, like, that's a really, the cooking techniques, you're layering upon layers. Here. Yeah, one thing that is important when we are working, need a lot of attention from mm -hmm. your uh, skills. We have not invented words in English to describe how amazing this is. I sound like a broken record, it's ridiculous. This is an um, ember baked eggplant. And what is on top? What is This is a cold rabbit that we just uh, pickle. The food here seems to make you, it almost forces you to slow down. But these, these meals, it seems to me, yeah. require you to, like you said, we have to be present to cook it. You have yeah. to be, you almost have to be present to eat it. I can do this alone the whole team make every guest happy, I hope. So here oh. we go. So we're gonna have some dessert now. 
On the bottom we have this roasted oat flour. We marinate these raspberries in the elderflower juice. And uh, on top we have this cream that is infused of herb. And uh, on top we have this um, sorbet that make out of um, wood sorrel. Bon appetit. This is like a Christmas present. Oh. Raspberries are my favorite. I found my childhood at the bottom of this bowl. It's amazing. Thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Both these meals are worth an entire vacation just to have lunch or dinner here. But perhaps the popular Swedish retailer IKEA is your only exposure to the culture of this country. Well, good news, they have a cafe where you can sample those famous Swedish meatballs and other authentic Swedish delicacies. Sure, it's not the same as traveling to Sweden, but you'll definitely get to try the meatballs, lingonberry jam, and so much more. One of the items on the menu is a piping hot cinnamon roll, which may seem out of place if you don't know your Swedish history. Well, I've got you covered. The word you're looking for is fika. Now, this is a Swedish tradition of taking an afternoon coffee break where coffee, tea, and pastries are served. No work is discussed, and as a matter of fact, I learned how to make one of these delicious cinnamon buns back in Gothenburg. What are we gonna do today? Because I, I smell something amazing in this kitchen going on. What are we doing? We're gonna make the famous Swedish cinnamon buns. So Come we're on. gonna start with uh, putting flour. That's yeast? That's yeah. fresh yeast? That's fresh yeast. So you have to crumble it in here? This butter needs to be melted. All right. And then we're gonna put milk in it. Okay. And it has to be 37 degrees. 37, okay. You know that your temperature body is yeah. 37. Yeah. So if you, you close your eyes and you dip your finger in, and you're not supposed to feel any difference. What? <laughs> That's crazy. There's people all over the United States burning their hands. <laughs> you're all getting eyes on it. Yes, come on. So then you start pouring just a little bit, and then you stir it. And now we are supposed to put the flour. All right. Now, Anna, I tend to like to have my buns a little sweeter. So Ooh, they're just, okay. a little, just a little more. A little bit more, yeah, right. okay. Then you stir that a little bit, yeah. and we need some salt also. This is right now what we call riveting television. Uh, this is what I call uh, living in the moment. Exactly. Yes. And, I just uh, like the notion yeah. of somebody on their couch right now being like, "Are they just gonna wait? We say, I'm gonna sit here and watch it." And the answer is yes. Yeah. You are. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I think that's good. I think it's good perfect. Good work, yes. This Thank is gonna you. be nice. So now this has to rise for half an hour. All right. So here how it looks like. Look at that. Press a little bit, uh -huh. then it goes up. It doesn't stay too long, then it's like then ready. Perfect. Yes. yes. This looks amazing. All right, now what? Put some flour on, and then you need this. Is there a right way or a wrong way to do this? No, normally because you want to get some air going. Uh -huh. So you want to do like, yeah. Oh, wow. So now you're going to um, roll it out. Now we're going to put the best part. Oh, the filling. Yes, yes, the filling. This is going to be magical. Yeah. And then two of cinnamon stuff. Oh, wow. So mix it all up. And I think it's the best way to do with the fingers. So now uh, we have to roll it. So we have to try to cut it so we can think about more the weight. Yeah, yeah. here you would do a little bit bigger. When you come here, you do thinner. OK. All right, now explain yes. what is fika. So fika is always something to drink. Okay, yes. got it. 
and also uh, with a cake or bun. Something but sweet. But the most important is to do it with people that you like. Fika. How long should the fika go on? You know, you go to Italy, you have a sniff. Yeah. That's Quick not thing. a fika. That's not fika. No, you have to sit down and have a good conversation. You have to get something out of it. And yeah. All right, so we're having fika. We've made our cinnamon buns. And we've actually met a local. I love it. You're the best. Well, we packed up our pastries to go. The crew and I prepared for our departure from Sweden. And sadly, that's all the time we have for this episode as well. I'm Eric the Travel Guy. Thank you for exploring Beyond Your Backyard. Okay, we brought it. I thought I was kidding, you're really in someone's home. <laughs> I brought my attorney for us to sit down with. Nice. Yeah. Oh, well, we have the apron yeah, for I love this apron. Yeah. This is a great apron. We should put the wine bottle and a nice straw, yeah. perhaps. It'd be lovely. Okay. Right. So then you need this? I do need this. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, we are normally... I said I'd be doing a workout while I was here this morning. Like a cinnamon boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I have like a light beer or something to watch that down? <laughs> yeah.